Hi, welcome to the first of what will hopefully be an ongoing series of videos in collaboration with Guy's Woodshop. We're hoping to be answering questions from people getting into woodworking on some of the basics. Guy's going to be focusing on power tool solutions to problems and I'm going to be focusing on hand tool solutions. And when we've shown a solution to a problem, we'll get together and discuss the pros and cons of the power tool method and the hand tool method. So what's happening in this episode? Well, we've been asked about wood that's surfaced on four sides, also known as planed all round. Basically, that means wood that's been prepared uh, to thickness and width and that the faces are at 90 degrees to each other. Although you can buy lumber that's been planed on all sides, the chances are by the time you get it back to your workshop, it's going to have bowed a bit, twisted a bit, cupped a bit. So we're actually going to ignore that and just consider material that's come straight off the saw. This has come from a timber mill, straight off a band saw, got rough sides, rough edges and it's roughly rectangular in section. What do we look for first? Well, is either of the sides flat? I've got a lovely flat bench which is a a great asset for a woodworker and just by laying it on the bench I can see it rocks a lot. It's not flat. If I didn't have a flat bench I could use a straight edge to determine that. The other thing we want to check is that the faces are perpendicular to the edges and we do that with an engineer's tri-square. I place a tri-square stock hard against the edge and gradually move the blade towards the wood we'll see that the tip touches the wood there and we still have quite a big gap up near the stock showing that it's clearly not square to check for twist I'm going to use some winding sticks basically two parallel sticks put one near one end of the wood one near the other end and sight across the tops of them here you can easily see how the far winding stick comes into vision on the right hand side before the left hand side, showing that this piece of wood is in twist. We also need to check the thickness of the material, for which I'll be using some dial calipers. A few measurements and I can quickly see that there's a variation in the thickness. And of course we'll need to check the width as well. And again, that's not consistent. What we're aiming to get is a component like this one. Obviously we'd hope to harvest something a little larger from that long board. But what I mean is, this is lovely and flat, absolutely no cup in there. The edges perfectly square to the faces. Exactly the same thickness throughout, and with no twist in it. The only cutting tool I'm going to use to do this is a jack plane. I would normally be using my number five, but since I recently picked up this low angle jack, I'm going to try that today. Now I'm not going to be preparing this piece of material in this video. We've already seen it's got a big bow in it and because I don't yet know what I want to make from it, if I take that bow out, which looks like at least an eighth of an inch of material will be wasted, I may end up snookering myself. One of the first things I like to do before I prepare the lumber is to decide what components I want from it. And if I was going to use a short section of this board, checking that with a straight edge, I can see I'd only lose probably less than a 32nd of an inch making that flat. So until I know what I'm going to make from it, this wood's just going back in the stack. I should be demonstrating 
on this smaller piece. This is a piece of Iroko. It's actually going to be quite a challenge because it's got uh, a lot of wild grain in it. But we're not too worried about getting a smooth surface straight away. We're looking at getting flat sides, flat edges, square to each other and with no twist. So this will do perfectly well for this demonstration. This has got a bow to it. As you can see it spins round quite easily. The tri-square blade touches the wood still leaving a large gap up near the stock. So this blank certainly isn't square. We can also see clearly that it's in twist. The first thing I'm going to do is prepare a flat side. So I've clamped my work firmly on the bench, taken my jack plane, and I'm going to be taking diagonal strokes one way and then the other way. Begin with not a lot comes off because we're clearing up the bandsaw marks. passes can check that with my straight edge that's looking a little bit high in the middle I'll check it with my winding sticks that's already looking a bit better I'm slightly high on this corner slightly high in the middle so I'm going to take a few passes across the middle each way I'm going to take a partial pass of this corner. That's almost flat. That's virtually out of wind. So I now take a few through passes. Hopefully it's with the grain in that direction. We'll soon find out. taken two sets of shavings because of the width of the work it's virtually two full blades worth so I've taken about two-thirds of a blade past there two-thirds on the other side and two-thirds down the middle still a very slight hump in the middle so I'm going to do a stop shaving or a set of stop shavings cutting from here to there you can just do this until the plane stops shaving quite a, a thick shaving set on the plane so I don't want to create a huge dip in it and that's wonderful my straight edge is now pivoting at the one end and at this end as well just recheck the twist that's no longer in twist so we've got one flat side and we call that the face side and I'll just make a mark on there to remember where I prepared it. So I've marked this as the face side. I know that's flat and that could be my reference for the other sides and edges. I want to prepare a face edge now which will be at 90 degrees to the face side. If I take a quick look with my tri-square I can see that 
this forward edge is high. So I can clamp it up, take a few shavings, predominantly from this front side. And I've got the grain sticking up here, so I'm getting some tear out. So I've taken a few fine shavings from the front edge. Go back and check it. What I'm aiming to do is to lower this front edge slightly so it would be square with the back edge. It's almost there. Now what I've created on across the width here is a slight hump so I just need to take the middle out. Let's check how we're going. And that's much better. Still slightly high towards from the middle towards the front corner here. So I'll take a few more stop shavings. Then a through shaving. And that's virtually spot on. One more set of shavings and we'll have a face edge. And that's lovely. I'll mark that as my face edge. Now I need to prepare this face to be parallel with the face side. Checking the thickness around the board, I've found that this end is thicker than this end. So I'm going to take some stop shavings from here, starting from the edge, stopping before I get to the other end, until I bring the thickness down to the same at both ends. Now that's almost spot on for thickness on all four corners. Clearly we haven't completely surfaced this side, so we can take some through shavings now to get rid of these saw marks. So all the saw marks have gone, quick check, and that's perfect. Now all we have left is this final edge to do. So in a similar way, that's going to be based on thickness. Very 
slightly high in the middle here. So I stop shaving. So here's our finished board. Parallel faces, parallel edges, with no twist, and lovely and square. What's more, very little dust, and some lovely kindling for the fire.